quick and use time with Ukraine war awareness. And guys, this is a total mess right here. What happened in northern Crimea near the town of Armyansk, which is also right near the Crimea-Ukraine border, on August 7th and 8th only started surfacing what has happened since a couple of days ago. And as usual, all the sides have conflicting reports, which we will go over both parties' statements. First, let's summarize what has happened in the story so far. Three alleged attempts by Ukrainian saboteurs crossing into Crimea by civilian disguises carrying at least 40 kilograms of TNT each has left one Russian soldier on August 7th dead and one FSB soldier on August 8th dead in apparent clashes when they were caught trying to reassemble their explosives and planned to use against civilian infrastructure. August 7th had 20 alleged saboteurs, of which 15 of them swam back into Ukraine, while 5 were captured in Crimea. The August 8th situation reports the alleged backing of Ukrainian heavy arms fire from armored vehicles from the Ukrainian border which killed the FSB unit. In a quick conclusion, both Ukraine and Russia are now massing troops and armor by the Crimean border checkpoint while the tensions are escalating between the two parties. If all of these reports are true and confirmed, this was the closest call yet to a full-scale war between Russia and Ukraine, which would not be good for anyone in the world, as it would be a global destabilizing factor. Now, footage has just recently appeared within the last couple of hours of the FSB's interviews with the alleged saboteurs and eyewitnesses around the area, in which the alleged saboteurs seem to give a lot of information and confessions, including giving the exact locations of their meetups with Ukrainian security service members, the information and instructions they were given, and so on. From one of the attempts, the explosive materials were found inside of the tires of a truck, which is pretty clever in my opinion had the alleged group not done it so close to a Russian military checkpoint and closer to the alleged civilians they wanted to blow up. Meanwhile, Putin confirms the Russian reports that have been surfacing during his talks with his Armenian counterpart, and he seems calm, but by the way he speaks, he seems pretty pissed off like legitimately pissed off. He does mention in what Ukraine war awareness has covered that this comes right after the assassination attempt on the current president of the Lugansk People's Republic six days ago. Now, what the Ukrainian side is saying is that they are denying all Russia's reports and saying that it wasn't any government-related saboteur group. Keep in mind, however, that this does not exclude any nationalist groups of Ukraine, just like the Ukrainian government had nothing to do with the grocery and electrical blockade of Crimea throughout September 2015 till January 2016. What important personnel have to say about this is that, yet again, the same story over and over again is that Russia did this to themselves. All of it. All three attempts have been combined into one attempt through Ukrainian perspective. And Alexander Turchinov, who is the National Council Chief, Weapons Procurer of Ukraine, and former acting president after Euromaidan coup, said this, that, quote, Moscow was trying to cover up deadly shootouts between Russian forces who traditionally abuse alcohol, end quote. Okay, had that been true? Had Russians just been playing drunk shootout games two days in a row, I really doubt that FSB units would be playing such games around low-ranking conscript guardsmen, if they are even conscripts to begin with, considering Russia's new conscript doctrine is only one-year draft and limits the conscripts on the co homeland soil. Even though Crimea is now considered by Russia as homeland soil, in a, my hypothesis, it is more likely the border is guarded by contract soldiers, considering those are the ones who took Crimea and guard an important border, taking into account the previous acts of instability to Crimea, such as the blockade. And it would be highly illegal for them to be drunk on their jobs. And if Russia would be trying to cover up embarrassing friendly fire shootouts, which usually have one day local newspaper story that's not even front page news, then the then it really, excuse me, then it really brings me to ask, in that case, why is Ukraine so worried to the point that it has to send armor to the Crimean border in significant numbers if it was a shootout that had nothing to do with Ukraine? And if Russia's covering up sh such an insignificant event 
shootout as per Ukrainian statements, then why is Russia also doing the same thing and wasting many resources to reinforce its border guards by sending armored convoys as well to the military checkpoints? It doesn't make sense if this was truly an al alcoholic rumble. And let's be real, had that been the case, and with Ukrainian media saying Russia is staging this like always, I'm sure it would be from a better reason than a, I'm sure, it, excuse me, I'm sure it would have been for a better reason than a drunk fight. From a neutral and realistic perspective, Turchinov should look less at how many Russians drank and should look more after his own volunteer forces drinking, since they committed sabotage acts in the past without any authorization from the government and are just as likely to abuse alcohol. This is all the news for now. What will happen in the near future as an effect from this is anyone's guess. Related videos about the Crimean situation and mentioned acts will be in the description below. If you can hit the like button to support future coverage and video translations, I would highly appreciate that. Thanks for watching and until we meet again, hopefully this mess will clear up and there will be more information that I could translate or post up and cover. Thanks for watching.